Hi, Ken Smith here. Uh, my son, John and I have been discussing uh, some basic setup tutorial to uh, give to the people. So uh, I'm just going to talk about basic stuff. I have some notes here. When you buy a Smith base, there's a little package in there uh, with your polish and cloth. It's got three wrenches. So these are the three that come with the base. I'll put them over here so you can see them on top of a white background. There's three sizes in there. This is 0.050 inches. A 16th inch would be 62 and a half. So 16th inches for the knobs. We don't supply that because we're not expecting you to take knobs on and off. But we give you this one, which fits into the bridge. Just put it in there and you can turn the bridge and raise it or lower it as you need. On my bench though, I use a screwdriver handle. It's more expensive. We don't give these out, but you know, I work on a lot of bases, so I keep, you know, more of a commercial professional tool. To adjust the pole pieces, if you ever need to, uh, or want to, some people experiment with them, we keep them just barely flush or a hair above, not below. It's a three millimeter, it's a metric size. And this goes into the hole. It's a hex, you know, shape you have to find where it is, and you can raise and lower it. Again, I have a screwdriver handle because sometimes I gotta adjust a lot of them. You know, I just stick that in there and I turn. Same tool. Now this three millimeter does fit into the truss rod. Okay. Those of you who have had problems with their, their nut being stripped, see how much play there is in this? I'm not even turning it. That's because three millimeter is too small for that opening. It will catch it eventually. But after a while, it's going to grind off the edge of the hexagon and it will be rounded and you'll be dead. So that is an eighth of an inch that it uses. That goes in there and it's tight. And see this? It barely moves. This is what you use for, to turn that. Tiny bit of play so you can get it in there. And of course, I have a T-bar handle that I use to, to adjust the truss rod as a bench tool. But the same stuff, I buy these in a bag of 20 or 100, depending on what I need. And these we, we buy, you know, for the bench, one or two. So those are the basic tools for the setup. So when I'm going to ship a base out, it may have sat here for days or weeks since uh, we, we finished it. And I don't do the adjustments, or check the adjustments rather, until the day I'm shipping it. Like, I'm going to work on this base. I'm shipping it tomorrow. I'm going to work on it this morning. I'm shipping it this afternoon. So it's the last minute setup just before it goes out the door. It's like getting a haircut just before you go on stage, you know, not a week before. So what I like is to feel how the heights are at the 24th fret. So I'm feeling this one, feeling this one. That one feels softer. So I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to raise it a hair. I'm going to raise it so it's parallel, not tilted one way or another. I'm just going to touch it just ever so slightly so it feels like it's the same pressure. It's a different string, you know, but I want it to feel the same. Because you're going to play by feel, not by numbers. People ask me all the time, what's the height of the 24th fret? I don't know. I don't measure it. I mean, there is, there's some rulers here, but I don't measure that. There are texts that do measure. This is 364, 230. I don't do that. You know, I've always been a guy who went by feel on the setup. So there could be a basic measurement, but the bottom line is, I know it needs a little bit of a room. Now, when you pull the string, you can see it's vibrating about this much. So if it's lower than this much, it's going to hit the fret. It has to have room for oscillation. When a string vibrates, it moves. This is not tuned up yet, but, you know, I'm not sure the neck is adjusted, but you got to have room for this string. Some people do different techniques, tapping or this, if play real light, they're going to want a different setup than what I want. So there's another guy I know, he set this bass in one time for something. Uh, Change strings actually was on tour, and I says, Oh, 
you want me to lower these strings for you? He says, no, I'm playing that way. They were really high. He was playing upright bass. He plays that way. And then I get another guy in where the strings are almost touching the fingerboard. I says, you can play this? He goes, yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> you know, so th there are different opinions of what a setup is. Bottom line is a setup is for you, not for me. So when I check a neck, I don't look down there. Guys do this, they're looking down. You might, you know, be uh, fooled by how the frets are crowned. But what I'd like to do is put it on the side and use the string itself as a straight edge. So it's pretty thick here where it goes into the body. So I'll press it around the first or second dot and look to see how much space is between the bottom of the fret, rather the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. And it looks pretty, pretty close, you know? Actually, it's just about touching. So I think it's too straight. That's a good thing. You know, remember some of those bases you guys would buy in stores? And you turn the truss rod, you're trying to get that banana out. Well, we don't like bananas, you know, uh, except for eating. So I like to have just a hair relief. I remember I was setting up Stanley Clark's base once, he's a friend of mine. And I asked him about that. He says he likes a little bit of relief. That was his exact words. He likes a little bit of relief. Anthony Jackson, on the other hand, our old conversations in the old days, early 80s, he likes his neck as flat as possible. He's very adamant about that. But he likes to raise it at the bridge. That's how he wants to play. You know, some guys like a little bit of more curve and a higher action to dig in. Some people detune their bass a step or so. And they need some room for those strings to move. They might have a higher action or more bow in the neck. Or maybe the brand bass they play naturally fluctuates more than a stiffer five-piece neck with graphite. Would have any finger board. So people get used to what they get used to. So speaking about what you get used to, when you get a Smith bass, you're going to play it out of the box and feel it. My recommendation is if you don't know Smith basses, Learn the bass a little bit first. Get used to it. See what it does before you start changing things. Uh, a lighter string is going to oscillate a little bit more. So if you play hard, okay, you're going to be chasing it because it won't respond as quick. Whereas uh, a little heavier, like a medium stitch of 44, this is going to respond quickly. Okay? Now, my opinion is if it responds quickly, you can play faster. So whether you use a 35, a 40, a 45, a 50, a 44, a 46, a 38, whatever number you like on the G, and whatever corresponding balance or unbalanced set from one side to the other, that's up to you. Once it's your base, it's your base. But uh, like cars, they come from the factory with a specific brand tire. One or two different stuff they'll use. We have these, we have the burners that we'll use in the, in the tape recorder as well. And then once the customer gets it, he changes whatever he wants. The ride might be different, but uh, it's your product at that point. Uh, if the bass would come in to me for a setup when it's two or five or 20 years old, you know, short interview is what are you looking for? What's the problem? What do you want different? Then I set it up either the way he tells me, I try, or that I set it back to the way it was, uh, the best I can, factory setup. Uh, for the base with whatever age or experience it has already built into it. So the bottom line is you should be able to get the base pretty close to the way you like it. But the Smith base has a really strong stiff neck. It's five piece laminated on most of the models, ebony fingerboard or Murado fingerboard on some bases. And uh, it's 24 fret. It's got graphite bars inlaid. It's a pretty strong neck. So when the neck is strong and fairly straight, the string is soft on the neck. When the neck is weaker and floats more, there's more tension. There are bases out there, the majority of them, you play the neck, there's a little bit of fight in the left hand, you know? So uh, those bases you set up differently. Uh, the music itself is hard enough, especially when you try and play advanced techniques in modern music. Uh, you don't want to fight the bass to play your music. It's nice to have a bass that cooperates with you. So I've gone over the tools and uh, those are the basics. You got the bridge, you have the truss rod, you have the pickups. No, that's the basic setup. And sometimes you go back and forth till you get it just right. Uh, 
Either you've done it many times and you know exactly where to go, what to do first, or you're just learning and trying to figure it out because you can't get to a repair shop or you don't like the repair shop. So it's not rocket science. Uh, my son was changing his setups from middle school, putting his own jack in, you know, circuit changing. You know, you just, you just learn how to do it with a little bit of a coordination, like changing a light bulb, and it can be done. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I'm gonna go back for a minute. If you played the Fender bass way, way back, uh, maybe not in the 50s, but maybe the 60s or 70s, you may remember they had a little like plastic thing over here, black thing right here, screwed into the board. Little black thing you would put your hand on to play with your thumb. And uh, I remember, you know, seeing some people, they would hold it like guitar players, they would play with their thumb because the a fretted bass was more common to be, you know, uh, adapted to by a guitar player than an upright bass player. Whereas the upright bass player, switching to electric bass, would be playing over here. You wouldn't be touching that thing. But you know, 25 years after they started making the Fender bass, approximately, they took that piece off. They stopped putting it on the basses. Uh, of course, before that, every time you buy a Fender bass, especially when slapping came in, that's the first thing you take off and stick it somewhere. Nobody wanted it. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that was done. And maybe that's the first version on a guitar type bass of a ramp that you hold on to. So later on, you know, people would just rest their hand on the pickups, whether it's precision bass or jazz bass or come back and pick up a custom bass of some sort, and they put it in the pickup. Sometimes they rest it on the B string, they might move it over when they play the low string when it's an E or a B. Uh, then people have made ramps in different places. Usually it's in between your pickups. We haven't, I haven't done them, but I've seen them on Smith bases, and if you like that, that's fine. But I will say that if you put a piece of wood up under the strings, close to the strings, that mutes the sound. And how do I know that? The upright basses that have long fingerboards, the longer the fingerboard is, those notes are muted. The shorter the fingerboard is, it's a little bit louder because it doesn't have the string vibrating off of that piece of ebony. So it's an electric bass, so maybe muting is good because you want to control the sound electronically. Uh, I don't put mutes on, on, I mean, I don't put ramps on the basses. Uh, you just haven't done it. You're welcome to try it. But people put their hands in the pickups quite commonly. Now, the height of the pickup is done by two screws. That's a regular number one screwdriver. There's different sizes. Number one, there's number two, and they're real tiny ones, like a number zero. You know, there's different sizes. So this is just a regular number one screw. And a little tip about using a screwdriver, especially near a piece of wood, you do one hand and it slips, big scratch in the base. I always put it in. I put my hand here and I guide it. I'm doing this over 50 years, since before I had a company. As a bass player, I always hold the screwdriver in place as I turn it. I don't freehand it because it's too easy to slip off and scratch the instrument. You don't want that to happen. So with the pickup adjustments, also comes into action for a setup. So right now, you can see how much room between my finger and the pickup. Now for sound, that's pretty good. It's not too close for magnetic feedback type thing of muffling the sound. But there's poles there if you want to get a little more volume. Uh, but some people who want it closer, you would loosen the pickup and raise it up. Closer to the pickup, to the string rather. The pickup closer to the string. So it's almost, the pickup itself is a ramp. But if the sound is too muffled, by the poles, you can slightly recess them maybe one turn beneath the surface because the bar magnets are a little bit underneath the, uh, the epoxy of the, of the uh, casting here. So there's, there's ways of using this to get it higher and you may want to lower these which are magnetized by the magnets. So that's an important factor to, to know how to get the sound you want to get. Thank you.